It says zero. I don't know whether we're starting, we're done, we're way over. Um, thank you very much. Fantastic. You were um, describing in the green room before that a lot of this is like going to the pub with a really good story that you're just dying to tell. <laughs> I think that enthusiasm comes across brilliantly. Thank you. Um, especially with what I think a lot of people regard as, as you said, eye gouging material. Yeah. Um, I found that once you had explained the Bach algorithm and how it worked, I, I got it wrong. I felt far less kind of, I don't know, stupid or intimidated by the results. I was like, okay, well, there's some logic to that. I get how that happened. Do you think there is a, um, an argument for sort of algorithm transparency? You know, all the anomalies you pointed out in the examples were down to particular instances mm. in those algorithms mm -hmm. that once you were aware of, all the over indexes in that. Yeah, so that's a really good question, actually. I mean, I think that I am definitely in favour of the, uh, the argument about algorithm transparency in the sense that we can take them down a peg or two, yeah. right? Because I think that part of the problem is that people sort of hero worship algorithms, thinking that they're these sort of omnipotent, you know, I don't know, like really, I mean, people see them almost as though they're magical. And I think that um, that's really where the problem is. I mean, they can do amazing things, don't get me wrong. But I think that, like, you, I, I sort of think of it as though you're, you're squishing a, a round peg in a square hole. It does mm. a really good job a lot of the time, but there are these problems at the corners. And I think that I like the argument about transparency because I think if people were more realistic about, you know, just where the problems are and that, that stuff can go wrong, I think we would avoid much greater problems that come from that. But I think that there's different kinds of transparency. And some people say you should just, you know, basically everything should be open source. You should make it so that everyone can see everything. And I think that I don't, I don't sort of like that argument. I think okay. that that's both too much and too little. So on the one hand, I think, you know, if I published my source code for everything, or, or if anyone did, you know, you're not going to, it takes a long time to work out what's actually going on. But I think also by doing that, you take away the sort of competitive angle and I think that actually a lot of the, the, the positive things that we have to look forward to come from intellectual property being protected and uh, companies really, you know, having that opportunity to, to sort of make, um, make their algorithms profitable, really. Yeah, okay. Um, just picking up on the car example there, uh, Volvo have been at the forefront of, sort of car safety for a long time. And in fact, mm. you probably know, I might, I might be taking this from your book. The three-point seatbelt. That's not in my book, but Excellent. you're right. But you're right. They are yes. <laughs> so when they first, <laughs> when they first <laughs> released that, um, there were these outcries of this is uh, nanny state is ridiculous. <laughs> At the moment of a crash, I want to be able to jump out of my car, <laughs> not be impinged by this. And now, of course, it's mandatory. Yeah. And um, so sort of the, the flip side of um, us being too trusting is just taking this kind of luddite approach of the machines are taking over, I'm scared of AI, I'm scared of robotics, you know, and, and this is, you know, it, it's a big theme in, in the current dialogue. What do you think, as people who work with data, as somebody who is uh, championing the intelligent use of algorithms, what can we do to make society, you know, mentioned before, what's the societal ease that we can, what can we do to make society more easy with this? Yeah, I think it's a great point, because I, I mean, we have this strange relationship with technology in the sense that on the one hand, we enthusiastically adopt it without really thinking, but then as soon as it's shown to be, have even a chink in the armour, right? So as soon as it's shown to have any flaws at all, we just completely throw it away and are like, well, I'm done with that. And I think that really you want to find some middle ground there where you're, you're just much more realistic about what's, um, what the technology can do. And I think that the way to do that is being honest about the flaws in the technology from the outset, not pretending that it's perfect, but I think it's also about being really honest about the flaws in the human systems. Like the VAR argument, I think is a perfect sort of microcosm in football yeah. um, of exactly this, where it's, you know, I think that there's sort of, there's these two systems that aren't perfect, right? So the human system, um, all kind of problems, the, the, the technology system really clearly has teething problems. And then these people sort of saying, throw it away completely, forgetting that what you're left with um, without it, it might be sort of worse, you know, than what you started with. And I think it's just you have to be very clear about what your objective is. Is your objective to make the fairest possible system? Is your objective to sort of, you know, what is your actual objective? Yeah. And then it's about finding the partnership between human and machine that I think can get that as, as, as well as possible. I think that, that objective point is good because um, what frequently happens is, who knew that mobile phones were going to become completely addictive? 
and we would lose a generation of children to you know, <laughs> diving and adults, into them. To be fair, and, and, and adults. <laughs> um, so th that was an unintended consequence. But I think if you state, if you state the objective up front, this is what it's for. As you start to diverge from that, you can say, well, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Yeah. Can the user decide about that? Um, we have got time for questions from the audience. It still says zero. Who knows? Maybe we're way over. <laughs> um, <laughs> Graham hasn't thrown anything at me. Are there other questions? Do you have a, a mic? Sorry, down the front. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Do you think there's a risk that if we retain human control in an algorithm informed system, that you end up losing complete trust or purpose in having an algorithm? Oh, that's a good question. So if we keep human control, is there, is there a purpose in having the algorithm? Because there's always an opportunity to override the algorithm. That is a great question. Uh, yes. So, okay. Hmm. I think it's... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you do ethics as well, right? I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, it depends on the situation, I think. Um, there are, I think... So, like, for example, with... Um, in, with autopilot in planes, right? There's this like this long-standing joke, which is that the perfect team to fly a plane is a uh, a computer, a human, and a dog. So um, the computer is there to fly the plane. The human is there to feed the dog, and the dog is there to bite the human if it tries to touch the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I definitely think that there are some situations where that is the case, right? Like, I think, you know, actually, you need to just not, you know, where, where human intervention makes stuff far worse. But I also think that, you know, there's a lot of situations where that's not the case, where the, the but, I mean, autopilot in planes almost never fails, right? It's, you know, it's incredibly safe. Um, and I think that that's why that, you know, that's a particular type of situation. There are other situations like the bail algorithms where really we're just incrementally improving on the human system that we've got, where I think that actually you still need to regain that level of control. So I think it, it, it depends on the situation really. Um, this is now flashing, which either <laughs> means we should leave the building or wrap this up. Yeah. Uh, so I'm afraid we don't really have any time for more questions. Thank you very much. Of course for entertaining and educating. Thank you very much. Cheers, Hannah.